Okay guys, so today we are going to start talking about multiplying with decimals. So it's pretty much just like regular multiplying. The only difference is, of course, we have decimals. So before we get started, let's talk about some vocabulary words that actually mean to multiply. So the first one is pretty basic, pretty simple. It is the word times. So if you see the word times, that means we are going to be multiplying every time. So if it's like four times three, that means you're multiplying four times three. The next thing is product. The word product also means to multiply product. That means the answer to a multiplication problem, okay? And then, of course, easy one, if it says to multiply, if they are being multiplied, you multiply. Um, another one would actually be double. And what would we be multiplying if it was double? We would be multiplying it by two. Yeah, because if it's double of something, if I want double the amount, that means two times the amount. So I'd actually be multiplying it by two. Another num um, vocabulary word that we talked about was of. If we have a fraction followed by the word of, that means to multiply. So of still means to multiply in any case. And then the last one that we're actually going to focus on is area. So if I find the area, I could even find the area of this rectangle. If it asked me for that, I would multiply this side by this side. So area also means to multiply. Okay? So those are just some of the vocabulary words that we need to pay attention to in our word problems. The next thing we're going to talk about is this right here. It says blank are the numbers being multiplied together. So those are our numbers, and those are factors. Factors are the numbers being multiplied together. So in example one, my factors is my 1.23 and my 4.5. Those are my two factors. So those are just my two numbers being multiplied together. My product is the answer. So now that we've talked about some vocabulary, and what our factors mean, let's actually go through a problem and work it out. So the first thing we need to pay attention to is I have 1.23 times 4.5, okay? So how I line this up is I need to put, I need to stack them up. So first thing, I need to stack them. But I have, this one has three digits, this one has two. So I need to put the longest number, my longest number on top. Okay, so when I stack my two numbers, my longest always goes on the top. I'm not going to put 4.5 on the top because 1.23 is longer. Okay, so when I do that, I am actually going to put 1.23 on top and then 4.5, just like this. So I line up my two back numbers and then we put our multiplication sign. Notice that we do not line up our decimals when we multiply. It does not matter. We worry about our decimals at the end. So when we're adding and subtracting, we line them up. Multiplying, we do not. We just put the longest one on top, okay? Now I can multiply normally. So that means there's nothing, going, nothing crazy going on when I actually multiply this, we're good to go. So, five times three is 15, so I put my one up top, five down here, and then I do five times two, which is 10, and then I add my one, so five times two is 10, plus one is 11, so I take my one and drop my one down here, and then I finally do five times one, which is five, plus one is six. Okay, so once I did my five times three, times two, times one, I've done all of those. I can mark that out. I've heard of people say X, X, O, stuff like that. So I'm done with those. I mark out my five. But once I go to my next level, do not forget to drop your zero. You have to drop your zero. So now I can do four times three. I start back over with the three. So four times three is 12. Carry my one, bring down my two. Make sure it's nice and neat, you stay in the same row. Four times two is eight, plus one is nine. So I don't need to carry anything, I just bring my nine down. And then four times one is four. 
And then lastly, I can add my numbers. 5 plus 0 is 5. 1 plus 2 is 3. 9 plus 6 is 15. Carry my 1, bring down my 5. And then 4 plus 1 is 5. Okay? So now this is where you really need to pay attention because this is where it's different than regular multiplication. We have decimals. So what we need to do is we need to count the places behind the decimals. So here, the first number, I have a two behind my decimal and a three behind my decimal. We see that? Here's my decimal, I have two behind it. On my 4.5, I have just my five behind the decimal. So I have one, two, three decimal places. So what I do is I go in my answer, I start at the back, and then I have three decimal places, so I move my decimal one, two, three places. So my new decimal is here, so my answer is 5.5. Five, three, five. And that is it. Again, I could even look here and say, okay, I have one, two numbers behind the decimal, three numbers, start back here, and I go one, two, three, so it's moved there. Okay, so let's look at our next one. We have 20 times 0 0.004. So again, we need to stack them. Longest goes on top, so between 20 and 0 0.004 or 4 thousandths. This one's longer, so it goes on top. So I'm going to put my 0 0.004, okay? And then I put my 20 below it. There's no decimals, so I just put my 20. And then I multiply like normal. Remember, longest number goes on top. Longest and multiply, just like normal. Okay, so now I can do this. Zero times four, zero. Zero times zero, zero. Zero times zero, zero. Zero times zero, zero. So once I have my zero multiplied by all of them, I mark it out. Go to the next level, drop your zero, and now I can do my two. Two times four is eight. Two times zero, zero. Two times zero, zero. Two times zero, zero. Then I can add zero, eight, zero, zero, zero. Now, don't forget, we gotta count our decimals. Count decimals. Okay, so I go up to my answer. I have one, two, three. There's no decimals back here. So there's no decimals in my 20. So I have one, two, three. So I go down here to the bottom. I start at the back and I have to move my decimal three places. So I move it one, two, three. So it's now here. So my answer, I'm gonna ignore this one. So I have 0 0.080, okay? Now, let's actually look at this one. It says 1.4 times 0 0.09. I can look at my answer choices. So this one, does it have any zeros? No, it's just a whole number, okay? This one, has only one decimal, this one has two decimals, and this one has three. So just by looking at my two problems, I can think about how many decimals I'm going to have in my answer. So to figure out how many decimals we have in our answer, I'm going to circle my decimals behind, or my numbers behind the decimal. So here, my four is behind it, so I circle it. On this one, I have a zero and a nine. So I have one, two, three decimal places. Three decimals. So I know my answer is gonna have three decimal places. So now I can check, does this one? It doesn't have any decimals, so no decimals. So I know that cannot be my answer because I have to have three numbers behind my decimal. 
Does this one, this one only has the one. So it only has one decimal, so that's not gonna work. I still need three. This one has two numbers behind the decimals. I need three, so now this one, oh, I have one, two, three decimal places. So D would be my answer because just by looking at my two, prop, my two numbers, I know I have to have three numbers behind my decimal. I didn't even have to multiply, okay? So on this, we just make sure that we stack our numbers, longest goes on top, multiply like normal, and then at the end, we count the places behind the decimal, and that tells us how many decimal places are in our answer. Make sure you tape in your notes and you can get started on your worksheet.